Good morning, brethren. I have the topic, Gospel of Peace. This topic was also taken by Brother TJ um, yesterday, but um, it was such a good topic. I, I just wanted to look into it, too, and we'll give you two different aspects of the same thing. So, um, the text for this, uh, Romans 10, verses 13 through 15 say, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Um, the second text is Ephesians 6, 13 through 17. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of the salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. So, the gospel of peace, what is this talking about? Well, I can tell you one thing. It's not talking about peace with men. That much is obvious. The apostles, when they went out and they preached, they didn't have peace with men. God says, beware when all men shall speak well of you. This isn't peace with men. There's, there's three ways that I found that we could take this. We have the gospel of peace with God. Peace being made between God and man. We have how the gospel uh, gives us peace in our hearts gives us rest um, in our hearts, and how God makes peace between the Jews and the Gentiles. We're going to start with um, the gospel of peace in our hearts. Um, Isaiah 57, uh, 18 through 21, this is God talking. He says, I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I will create the fruit of his lips, peace, peace to him that is far off. And to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. If you're apart from God, you will not have peace. This is actually a blessing of, to God that he doesn't let people stay, have peace in their sins. He, he makes it so that they don't want to stay in their sins. He makes it so... So they have no peace when they're away from him. Amen. Jeremiah 12, 12 says, The spoilers are come upon all high places through the wilderness, for the sword of the Lord shall devour from one end of the land, even to the other end of the land. No flesh shall have peace. There is no peace to the enemies of God. Now, some people in the world would say, Oh, I have peace. I have, I have peace in my life. But... They're not talking about the same kind of peace. Theirs may be a, an artificial peace, but God, God gives true peace. Um, John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So God gives us a whole different kind of peace, a true peace in our hearts. God says he's a God of peace. He wants, he wants his people to have peace. Uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 through 7. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye also be of the consolation. These words, consolation and peace, have, have a lot in common. God, um, God gives us peace in our hearts. He consoles us when we're in trouble. Amen. Um, but how does God give us this peace in our hearts? How does, how does he make that happen? Um, 
Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So we know that God is in control of all our circumstances, and that he's working them out for the good of them that love him, and are called according to his purpose. What do we have to fear? We can have peace. We know that God is in control. We know that God loves us. God has power. He can do whatever he wants. And the second way we can take this verse is having peace with God. I think this is the main, this is the main topic, or the main subject of, of the phrase gospel of peace. So, of course, it's obviously talking about Jesus, how, how Jesus made peace between God and man. Um, first of all, God wanted to have peace with man. God wants peace with man. He's not some angry, angry person who just wants to to smite down anyone who doesn't agree with him. He wants to have peace. He has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Jeremiah 29, 10 through 14 says, For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you, in causing you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all nations, and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you in, again into the place where I caused you to be carried away captive. This is God. He's, he, the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace. God's thinking thoughts of peace toward people. All day long, he stretches forth his hands to a disobedient and gainsaying nation. He wants you to turn to God. But, sin and God cannot mix. God cannot have peace with someone who is in sin. Habakkuk 1, 12 through 13 says, Art thou not from everlasting, O Lord my God, my Holy One? We shall not die, O Lord. Thou hast ordained them for judgment, O mighty God, and hast established them for correction. Thou art of pure eyes to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue when the wicked devoureth the man that is more righteous than he? God can't look on sin. How can he have peace with the people he can't look at? God, God has no fellowship with Beelzebub. There's no, none whatsoever. They're polar opposites. Ezekiel 13, 8 through 11 says, Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because he has spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God, and my hand shall be upon all the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies, and they shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel, and ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Because, even because they have seduced my people, saying, Peace, when there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others dabbed it with untempered mortar. Peace, and there was no peace. There is no truce. There's no state in which God is kind of not friends with you, but he's not enemies either. There's no truce between God and sinners. That's as simple as it gets. You cannot come to God in your sin. Romans 5, verses 1 through 2. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now this is how we get peace. Through Jesus taking away our sins, then God, then God could have this peace that he longs for with men because their sins are gone. By whom also, this is talking about Jesus Christ, this is the second verse, by whom also we have access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Without Jesus, you cannot have peace with God. It says, by whom also we have access by faith. So it doesn't say 
you can have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ and it's through our Lord Jesus Christ, period. That's the only way to God. There is no other way. John 10, 7, uh, 7 through 9 says, Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me were, are thieves and robbers, robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, if by me any man enter in, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. And of course, John 14, verse 6, Jesus saith, saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now the world today has come up with tons, tons of means to get to God. And they think that you can have peace with God if you do these steps or, or, or if, you're, if you're involved in a church or, or whatever. But there is no way to get to God if you don't give your life to Jesus and let him cleanse you of your sins. Amen. Uh, finally, God made peace between the Jews and the Gentiles. The gospel made peace between the Jews and the Gentiles. Ephesians 2, 11 through 17 says, this is kind of a long passage, but I think it's all important. It says, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes far off were made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make of in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he may reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity by, thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. Amen. Through Jesus, God broke down the broke down the middle wall of partition. He said he did he did away with the law. He he um the law era is over. Now we're in the era of grace, and because of that, the Gentiles can come in and have the same peace with God as the Jews did. Amen. So to sum up, God. Through God's gospel, he gives us comfort in our lives. He gives us peace in our hearts. He gives us peace between the Jews and the Gentiles. And most importantly, he gives us peace with God.